Gigi Baraiti, reading food wise. I start the section a window into my beliefs uh, in this introduction. And I'm going to read just a little bit and then highlight a few articles on India. I like to eat real food. I like to know where it came from. I like to think about the county or farm or farmer of origin when I'm eating the food. I enjoy growing my vegetables and raising lamb. I also am quite clear in why not all families still produce much, if any, of their food. It is time consuming, difficult, exhausting, and risky. Shopping and cooking also take time and energy. I get the draw of convenience. I like inexpensive as much as the next person does. And I know we wouldn't get either convenience or cheapness if we were all in our kitchens cooking everything that went into our mouths. My father was part of a large Italian family. My mother was born in Arkansas and grew up in Oklahoma. As a teen in 1922, she moved to California on her own. This is during the Dust Bowl era. From grits to lasagna suprema, my mother was a great cook. She lost her Ozark accent and literally, escaping the Dust Bowl, started a new life in Hollywood where I was born. She no longer raised crops or loosened soil, but she did marry an Italian romantic and nurtured my sister and me with arguably the world's best food. She exposed us to a huge variety of taste and we never went hungry, unlike herself and her brother and sisters. On any one day, my mother might be making two separate suppers so both my sister and I could get whatever food we craved then my father would come home and cook some Italian dish like roasted fennel, pasta and beans, pasta e fagioli, or vermicelli with anchovies. With all these parallel meals, the possibilities for sampling and experimenting never ended. The cooking captivated me, as did the shopping. Going to the small market as a little girl was a great adventure but nothing compared to going to the new Vaughn supermarket in Burbank, California, with its colorful, colorful aisles and huge delis. Spectacular though it was in my child's mind, big stores like this cut out our weekly visits to what we called the Italian store. No more trips to retrieve fresh raw milk at the Altadena Dairy either, or daily orders left for the backdoor milkmen. As a child, I have to admit, I welcomed the creep of convenience foods into our home. Pop-tarts and processed breakfast cereal, vivid memories. I know a lot more about food now, and that's due in part to my life experiences in other places I also have lived. Besides Southern California, these include upstate New York, Central Maryland, and the greater Baltimore area, rural Western Pennsylvania, and South Central Alaska. In each locale, I have found food-wise food and farms. I need to make this clear because a lot of my references here are to the bountiful Pacific Northwest, but I have developed my food-wise thinking by living elsewhere. So I mentioned those other places I've lived in the United States. Right now I'm, in, I'm living in Bellingham, Washington, but I have also lived in Italy and in the UK and, uh, and in Kerala, India for a very short time. And I mention India because now there is a spate of articles on the lockdown now about two weeks old in India and the impact on thousands of thousands of people without homes. And, uh, and, never have these numbers been so high of the vulnerable in India. So I am reading about what different states are doing, some rebelling against a very non-progressive state federal government. And, uh, and I turn to Kerala again. And, uh, and so I hope you enjoy this blog. Uh, 
posted about uh, the variation in the states, how the states are responding to uh, to complete lockdown and shutdown of access to resources. Reading this, I can't help but be struck by my tremendous privilege in my mobility, even during this time of shelter at home for coronavirus and all the options I have each day in terms of producing and procuring and processing my food-wise food.